From the loudest bang to the tiniest whisper, hearing is important. And our ears are our sound receptors. Different people's ears look very different. And even your own two ears may not be exactly the same. Check and see. Sarah. Are they symmetrical? Charlotte. And these? Mark. Caroline. Are these two alike? Three. And are these? Tasha. How well do yours match? Looking down the ear with an endoscope, you take the same route as the sounds we hear, down the ear canal to the eardrum. Sounds make the eardrum vibrate. Using a magnetic scan, and a computer, We can now take a totally new look at the ear. There's the eardrum again. But we can fly through it. It's as though we were on the other side of the drum, inside the head, able to stand inside the skull and look at the parts of the ear we call the middle ear and the inner ear. Daddy. We use hey, our ears for hearing. Go over to Daddy. Come on. Yeah? Go on, see if you can Come do on. it. As Go well on. as for balance. <laughs> the part you can see is the outer ear with its pinna or external flap. The ear canal ends at the eardrum. Sound waves make the eardrum vibrate and this is transmitted to the brain. Using a magnetic scan and a computer, we can now take a totally new look at the ear and see how our hearing works. This is the eardrum again, which is made to vibrate by sound waves. But here, we can apparently fly through the drum to see the rest of the ear, right inside the head. the ear is divided into three parts. There's the outer ear, ending at the eardrum, then the middle ear, and the inner ear. In the middle ear, there are three tiny bones, or ossicles, which are vibrated by the movements of the eardrum. They're called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. They carry the vibration of the eardrum across the middle ear into the inner ear and to the spiral-shaped cochlea. Looking at the cochlea with an electron microscope, you can see something of how sound is transmitted to the brain. These are rows of minute hairs, only a few thousandths of a millimeter high. As noise vibrates them, they send electrical signals to the brain, which we experience as sound. These V-shapes are in fact clusters of three lines of hairs that are part of a built-in amplifying system.
And below these hairs, you can see the rest of the amplifier. The hairs are sticking out of the cylindrical cell below them, and it's this that amplifies the vibrations of the tiny hairs. It's actually been possible to isolate one of these hair cells, so let's play it some music. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Play it, you guys, play it, come on. Join me, hard. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes. One. The excited response of these hair cells amplifies the faint vibrations that arrive here from the outside world so well that we can actually hear the sound of a pin drop. Unfortunately, from the moment we're born, the hair cells start to die, and those that register high frequencies die off first. Because of the loss of these hair cells, by the age of 10, we've heard a greater range of sound than we'll ever hear in the rest of our lives. Every hop, step and leap you take depends on balance. So, back inside the ear to see how it works through the eardrum, the receptors which detect how you're moving and which way up you are lie in the inner ear, in the semicircular canals. Inside the canals, there are minute hairs. The canals are full of fluid. As your head moves, the fluid moves. The hairs detect the movement of the fluid and send a signal to the brain. All movement can be analyzed in terms of three planes or directions. Side to side, which is called roll, forwards and backwards, which is called pitch, and round and round, which is called yaw. So the hairs can detect the three kinds of movement, pitch, roll and yaw, and enable us to know which way up we are, to walk, jump and move confidently. <laughs>